dear sisters and brothers let me start with a very short story which i read several years ago which will help me connect to what i want to share today once lord krishna was walking along along with sage narad and they went to a village this village was full of robbers thieves and bad people so they invited him for lunch and he had lunch and they asked for a blessing so lord krishna said may you all stay together in this place forever and stay united lord Nar- narad was sort of perplexed what kind of a blessing is he giving then they go to the next village which is full of good people people who have good intentions people who do good acts and they also call him to have food with them after having food they also seek a blessing and he gives a blessing that may you all get divided soon and go away from this place narad now really gets very angry what kind of a god you are you are telling the thieves to stay united and you are telling the good people to get divided so krishna says narad if the bad people leave the place they will multiply and rob the entire world it's better that they stay in one single place whereas the good people they are doing nothing about what they are good at they are staying in one single place and hence i wish them that they have to move out of this place so that they can serve the world narad understood that i also remember this quotation which often i quote in many places all it needs for bad to survive and thrive is for a few good people to do nothing last three days we have been fortunate enough for hearing daji's explanation on the concept of availability based on my own personal interactions with him and my little bit of work that i have done across several areas that have been given to me fortunately i thought i will share share a few basic concepts which will help us to take certain inputs on how to make us more available to his work let me go back to the school days when we would have read in mathematics a very simple concept about equilateral triangle an equilateral triangle by definition where the sides are equal the length of the sides are equal and the angles are the same 60 degrees adding to 180 degrees and the space inside is what you call as the area the smaller the equilateral triangle lesser the area let's replace the word area with availability and what does this three equilateral this equilateral triangle have in common is that they have three points from which they all join together if the sides are equal which means and if the triangle keeps getting larger and larger the area inside or the availability inside becomes larger there are three points which actually connect the equilateral triangle and let's take the three points and find what are those three attributes when you expand on them would make you more available to do his work let me call it the three c's you have in any equilateral triangle a summit which is the top point and the left bottom point and the right bottom point let's take the top point c as commitment the left point as consistency and the right bottom point as character and let's see how by combining these three we can make ourselves more and more available to his work which is what he has been sharing in the last 3 days in the batch 1 if you look at the first c which is at the summit which you call it as the commitment in life we all know for example if you want to lose weight you have to do a workout if you work out once in 15 days or once in 30 days you are only basically interested in your health you are not committed 
if you are seriously committed to health you will go to the gym or do workouts or whatever is essential for a much longer time commitment is like putting a postal stamp to an envelope till the goal is reached the stamp has to stay on the envelope if it falls in all probability the envelope will land up in the dead letter post office likewise we need to find what is that we need to be committed about in my view personal view specifically having spent time with charity maharaj and fortunately spending time with daji since 93 one thing i've understood is commitment is to the goal once many years back daji gave a talk here in this hall where he mentioned that set the goal in such a way that achieving that one goal every goal in this world can be achieved which means what maxim 3 tells us set the goal as the highest so commitment to goal is the first step that i would look at the larger the goal the larger the size of the triangle and hence larger your availability i do not know how many of you are familiar with my whatsapp pin status which i put several years ago my goal which i have taken which people who are close to me will understand is heartfulness must reach every home before i leave this planet once i set that goal i have found miraculously in my own personal life that all the material sides all the family side everything else automatically has started falling in place if you climb mount everest which is 29000 feet in the first 500 to 1000 feet you will find all kind of rich minerals diamonds and stuff like that you will still be rich while you aim for the highest which is the pinnacle or the top or the summit of the mountain likewise when you set the goal as the highest automatically what happens is there is a way in which grace and support from the highest level starts flowing i have seen it in my personal life that when you do his work and set the goal as the highest nothing becomes really impossible when he gave the work of being the regional facilitator of tamil nadu about a year back one thing that we all decided is we'll set the goal as the highest which is like tamil nadu has 8 crore people and we said that within about 2 to 3 years we'll ensure that all these 8 crore people get to know about what heartfulness is and if possible take those three sittings and become heartfulness practitioner to such an extent you stop anywhere and ask anyone on the road do you know about heartfulness they will have to say yes they might not be practicing but that they will at least say yes this is also one of the message recently daji gave go ahead and tell the people it's there whether they practice or not we'll come to that later when we set that as the highest goal then normally what happens is you tend to give your best and that increases the size of the triangle from the top side but only the top side is going to increase the bottom two sides don't increase it won't be an equilateral triangle which means the area or the availability becomes lesser inside so let's look at the other two c's and how it will contribute for us to increasing our availability the availability conundrum is something that is not a static state it keeps changing it keeps getting better and better and better as you become more and more progressive in your thinking in your need to contribute to the message that he wants to spread you will find that automatically the commitment levels keep going up and the other c that i spoke about the second one is the consistency the consistency is what takes you to the goal commitment lets you make a start commitment to a goal lets you define what your goal is but it is the consistency way back in 2015 I remember the series of talks that Daji gave in Manapakam where he spoke about the importance of automatism when you make something automatic you automatically ensure that it is aligned to your goal and when there is a goal alignment you tend to become more consistent if you are not consistent there is no way you can make your availability better to his work consistency also boils down to a very simple thing about managing your time as daji said in his talk when you are available to everything you are available to nothing if you really look at consistency i would look at the kind of habits we have we all have 24 hours in a day 
take those 24 hours, leave about six, seven, eight hours that you spend on sleeping or taking or recuperating. The rest 15, 16, 17 hours is available to us to do what we choose to do. Many years back, I remember 2016 or 17, Daji beautifully mentioned that it is the choices that lets you manage your time and how you contribute to the mission. When we are available to too many goals, when we set too many goals, what happens is we tend to get distracted and our habits consume the time that ensures that we don't contribute sufficiently enough to the cause that he would want us to, though he will not tell us openly. Consistency also in one way is about the work that the preceptors do. In my personal interactions with Daji, many times he has said that the moment I make a preceptor, a person a preceptor, the spiritual progress stops. Why? Because what they were consistent with in reaching the goal of or the need or the wish of becoming a preceptor somehow goes away the moment they become a preceptor. There is a covenant that all preceptors sign in which says that at least two sittings a day you must give. For example, I know many preceptors who do much more than that. In one of the recent conversations we were having, and this was about two, three years ago, we were having a conversation around the contribution of preceptors to the cause of spreading heartfulness. And he was very sad when he said that less than 15 to 20 percent of the preceptors do the work for which they have been given the permission by the hierarchy and by himself. Which is quite sad to know that we have strived hard and we think that getting that badge on our shirt is very important. And we get it and then we don't do our work. It creates power grossness which preceptors know for sure. When you are consistent, as part of spreading heartfulness, as I mentioned, taking heartfulness to the whole of the world. This is what their uh, vision is too. Babaji Maharaj has said, I would like to see a preceptor in each home of this world, which means there has to be at least one abhyasi in each house of this world. You look at 800 crore plus population, at least about 100, 150 crore preceptors should be there. Imagine the kind of vision that the masters have set for us and the speed at which Daji is taking it. If preceptors do not contribute, what tends to happen is you tend to become a block to the work that he is doing. He even once openly said, though it is sad to quote, he told me once that preceptors should come forward and give up their preceptorship if they think they are not fit to do his work. We cannot do the work grudgingly. We cannot do the work, oh my God, I have taken this up, now I have to do. This is something that you have to look forward to. Many times he said that it's like meeting a girlfriend for the first time. How much sort of interest, how much kind of anticipation we will have to go and meet our beloved. Like that every sitting where you are able to connect a potential seeker or a new seeker or an abhyasi with whom we want to deepen the practice, they want to progress and the work that the preceptor does is humongous. Two sittings is a must. One sitting at least is acceptable. Anything less than that, Maybe we have to reconsider and look at, because many times what happens is when we come back and ask him for preceptors, you look at the list, say that your center already has so many preceptors, why do you need more? We cannot tell him that only about two out of ten preceptors are doing the work. So this is a very clear sign that I would personally like to share from what I have heard from him. It pains him a lot, though he may not openly say that when preceptors or even volunteers don't do the work, it stagnates. and stagnant water, you know what the impact is. So let's look at becoming consistent in what we have taken up as the ultimate goal. Your goal need not be the same as what I have taken. You can take any goal that suits you, which is in alignment with the spiritual goal that he would want us to achieve. It can be as simple as taking heartfulness to 10 people in the next one year. It's still a reasonable goal, not a bad goal. At least there are many abhyasis whom I know who keep it at least every year I must bring 50 new abhyasis into the system and they work towards that consistently. It is the consistency that actually fills up for lack of talent. People who know, people who are teachers will know that even if you don't have talent, if you are repeatedly being consistent, somehow, as they say that when an ant runs over a stone consistently, it still tends to break the stone. Likewise, our consistency automatically draws the grace. I personally know that I lack talent in many areas, but by just being consistent in my commitment to the goal that they want us to achieve. 
this is the same uh, kind of a feeling that we have managed to bring in at least in the volunteers and preceptors and functionaries in Tamil Nadu. This is something if it can be duplicated. I can't say that we have done it in full, but we have made a beginning. If it is something that can be taken pan-India and pan-global, imagine that in the next two to three years' time, the things will automatically happen. There is a specific reason. In one of the recent uh, Zoom calls that we had, I remember the quote that he shared several years ago, which I shared in his presence. He mentioned that there is some kind of a spiritual window which is open between now and next three, four years or so. And in this time, whoever gets in will have such fast progress towards the goal that is unimaginable, which has never been opened in the history of the nature till now. If you really understand what it means, we are talking about a 13 to 14 billion years of uh, creation and there is one window for us to go back and which is available for three to four years. How much time would we want to spend in ensuring that not only us, everybody goes towards this goal in this period of time, which is hardly another four or five years left. The journey ahead is quite long, but if you are committed to the goal and we are going to be consistent, the chances of ensuring that heartfulness reaches to all the population of the world is not far off. Let me come to the third point, which is the point which sort of joins all these two points together which is what I call as character. See, character is something which is a very difficult toolbox to understand. But in my personal view, I just broke it down to a few parts so that if it is of help to you, you may look at how you can make use of it. For me, character is something quite simple. What helps me to transform myself in aligning to the goal is what I would change my character towards. Whatever is not helpful, I would drop off. Let me explain it with a couple of examples. If you look at the Ashtanga Yoga, the first two steps of Yama and Niyama, Daji has many talks said that Yama is where you burn or give up what are the things that are not required. It's like a to-do list and not to-do list. And when you make this list, there are a few things which stops us from progressing. As he painfully mentioned in his talk, we even tend to question the wisdoms of the masters. We even tend to question the choices that they make, we even tend to question why is Master saying like this, why is he talking only to so and so and things like that. When you look at Niyama or Yama for that matter, I would only look at two things that we need to burn, which very clearly boils down to two biases that we are all born with and we continue to grow. The first is what we call as the cognitive bias, the second is what I would call as the emotional biases. Cognitive biases, if you do a Google search, you'll find there are more than 50 to 60 cognitive biases you'll find. If you can start giving up, cognitive bias basically comes from our ability to think. Instead of discriminating, we just think and prejudge and then jump into certain suicidal well from out of which we are never able to walk out of. If we are able to introspect, which is what Dharana and Pratyahara is about, and give up those cognitive biases, Emotional biases are our tendency to connect with people we know, the tendency to hate people we don't like, the tendency to discriminate people based on color, religion, caste, sex, and things like that. Fortunately for humans, we all know what our cognitive and emotional biases are. If we ensure that we lighten the burden of our journey towards the goal that he wants us to, please ensure that you burn those biases which is the Yama part. If you look at the Niyama part, it is about a few to-do list. Let me give a very simple thing for volunteers or Abhyasis who would like to participate in this great journey of heartfulness throughout this world. To start with, set aside 15-20 minutes a day, a fixed time, which will bring an automatism. In this time, I will do something for spreading the message of heartfulness. It can be as simple as practicing the four intentions the four suggestions and the three intentions that he has shared with us. If we just practice that and send, it, send out that as a vibratory sort of a field around us, we will find that more and more people start getting attracted. Because many times when people speak about character, this question has come up in several discussions I've had with volunteers. When Daji says character formation, does it mean we don't have character? It's not that. Character formation is the first step. From character transformation is what we move into. And finally, the magic happens when you actually metamorphosize into becoming like what he is. If you understand these three concepts of being committed, 
to the goal, define your goal, whatever is the highest. Your material life will automatically sort of plug into that. Find ways to be consistent in moving towards this goal. Build the character traits that are essential to combine the commitment and the consistency to your goal and ensure that the triangle keeps becoming larger and larger to such an extent that the availability, which is one of the most important points he shared in this message, availability to what? Availability to whatever he wants us to do. Availability to the change that he would want to see in us. We become the block. He never stops giving us what is to be given to us. As Babaji Maharaj beautifully said, from the movement from left to right, I can take you to the highest, but are we ready? If we are ready, you will find that a magic happens and that heartfulness becomes a household name, maybe in the next three to four years' time. Not in India, not in Asia, but in the entire world. And that is the best gift that we may be able to give to the Masters while we are here. If not we, who else? If not now, then when? Thank you.